Good morning, Brisbane, and welcome. That's the first round of applause we've had for that video out of all of the Osries we've had this year. So congratulations, Brisbane. I think it's a great way to start off the day. I always love this part of the plenary. I think it's the anticipation of what's to come. And I can assure you we have a brilliant morning ahead of us. Now, many of you in the audience will know that this year is a very special year in that it marks the 50th anniversary of Esri. And 50 years is a milestone that not many companies get to celebrate. In fact, not many technology companies at all. I think it really speaks to the value of the science that we're so passionate about. And when we look back over the last 50 years, a lot has happened, a lot of things have changed. And in fact, when I look back at 1969, I realized it was a significant year for many different reasons. In 1969, Australia helped launch the first man on the moon. It was the year that Neil Armstrong uttered those immortal words about a giant leap for mankind. It was also the year that a pioneering group of musicians walked across the road to record what was to become their final album. It was a year of great love, peace and rock and roll in the fields of a dairy farm outside of Bethel in New York. But it was also the year that the world learned about people like Charles Manson and his followers. In 1969, Richard Nixon was elected president of the US. And it was the year that Sesame Street launched a big yellow bird on our TV screens. <laughs> but perhaps most importantly for us, 1969 was the year that Laura and Jack Dangermond opened the doors to their land use consulting firm, which they named the Environmental Systems Research Institute, which went on over the last half a century to develop the world-leading ArcGIS platform and become known globally as Esri. And today, we can look, thank and look back at those early ArcGIS pioneers and really show gratitude for their determination to push the technology from once what was considered the inconceivable to what we know as our reality today. Laura and Jack would be the first to say that it is us, the ArcGIS user community, the masters of the inconceivable, who are responsible for their continued investment in the research and development that has elevated GIS to such lofty heights. So we wanted to take this opportunity at this very significant point in Esri's history to acknowledge those Australian pioneers who have done so much for our broader spatial community. So I am honoured to be here today announcing the inauguration of the Australian GIS Hall of Fame. Clap. <laughs> the Australian GIS Hall of Fame seeks to recognise those organisations and individuals who have an extensive track record of significant achievement, showing traits such as creative thinking, vision, perseverance, inspiring leadership, and perhaps most importantly, great community-mindedness. And this morning, I was fortunate to attend the inaugural awards ceremony where we inducted two organisations and two very worthy individuals into our inaugural year of the Australian GIS Hall of Fame, and I would love to quickly introduce you to them. We have all four of them either in the room or represented by their colleagues in the room, so I will um, get some of them to, to wave uh, when we announce them. So without much further ado, our first Australian GIS Hall of Fame laureate, inducted under the category of GIS Pioneer, is an organisation that is familiar to all of us. A multi-award winning agency, they have shown a willingness to lead only from the front, exercising a grade of tenacity shown by history's most notable explorers to map the gaps. Our inductee sits as a true global ambassador for inventive spatial thinking and with their most recent undertakings involving Earth observations and the mapping of the ocean floor, they have yet again shifted the bar higher for applied GIS. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in congratulating Geoscience Australia. <laughs> Give us a wave. No. <laughs> 
And our second inductee in the GIS pioneer category is the poster child for entrepreneurial government, exercising a level of creative thinking usually only associated with startups and disruptors. Forward thinking open data applications such as Queensland Globe, QSpatial, and GeoRes Globe have set the benchmark for spatial enablement of both government and industry, offering significant benefits for us all. Would you please join with me in congratulating the Queensland Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy on their induction into the Hall of Fame? <laughs> Yay! Now moving on to our second category, which is a really special category because it seeks to acknowledge those individuals who have done so much for us for so long. It's a Lifetime Achievement in GIS Award. And our first individual Hall of Fame laureate is a passionate advocate for the science of GIS. His vision for what the technology should do, as opposed to what it could do, has seen ArcGIS capabilities supporting the area of oceanography and meteorology evolve to what they are today. In fact, Esri has recognized his incredible determination to have ArcGIS reach its potential with a special achievement in GIS or SAG award and has credited him with the inclusion of time as a dimension amongst other features within the platform that we know today. Presently serving as the Department of Defense's Director of Maritime Geospatial Intelligence, our inductee boasts one of the most distinguished careers within the broader geospatial community. Would you please join with me in congratulating one of the masters of the possible, Mr. Martin Rutherford. <laughs> Martin? Where is Martin? Martin at the back there. Should be in the front. <laughs> and our second individual Hall of Fame laureate has built a career focused simply on making a difference. Whether it be in aid of South Australia's most vulnerable citizens, or enabling the highest levels of government, or simply stepping up to champion the interests of his fellow geospatial community members, our next inductee's reach has been great, but his impact far greater. Presently serving as the Senior Geospatial Intelligence Officer and Director of State Stat for the South Australian Department of Premier and Cabinet, our award recipient has spent the last 30 years of his career actively rewriting the playbook for applied GIS. It gives me great pleasure to officially welcome a very worthy recipient of a Lifetime Achievement in GIS Award. Would you please join me in congratulating Gary Maguire? And I know where Gary is. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, just another round of applause for all four of our inaugural laureates, Geoscience Australia, Department of Queensland, Queensland Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy, Martin Rutherford and Gary Maguire. But the inspiring stories don't end here, folks. In fact, they've just begun. We have an inspirational lineup of international and local speakers with us this morning sharing the details of their incredible projects and work. We start off this morning with BP's Global Integration Director, Mr. Brian Bourmay, who will be talking us through how a global energy powerhouse like BP has driven their digital transformation program through using geospatial technologies. Just a few stats that kind of blew me away. 50 portals worldwide, a user base of 15,800 people, GIS team, 12, wow. We also have a, a wonderful story of an engineering project underway currently in Asia, one of the largest in Asia ever, where we see the integration of BIM and reality modeling with GIS. And then we move over to one of our laureates, Gary Maguire, talking to us about how South Australia has put geospatial tools in the hands of their leaders to help them tackle some of the largest whole of government issues that that state faces. That's really inspirational and I think uh, many of the public sector folk in the room will find that really um, encouraging for what can be done elsewhere. And finally, we finish off with simply an amazing lady, Esri's chief scientist, Dr. Dawn Wright. She's one of the original geo explorers and she'll be sharing some of the adventures of her lifetime with us 
I've seen a sneak preview and some of that stuff that I saw on the screen blew me away. So it's going to be a really wonderful morning and we're nearly about to get proceedings underway, but I do have a couple of acknowledgements and bits of housekeeping that I do just need to talk you through. So we'll start with the old favourite. Can you please ensure that your phones are set to silent so that we're not disturbing those around you? And in the very unlikely event of an evacuation, I've been told that the exits at the back of the hall offer the best chance of survival, although all the other ones are pretty good too, uh, and there will be staff to guide you from the building. Now, even though your phones are set to silent, we would love for you to join the digital conversation on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and you can do so using the usual Esri Australia handle and the Osri hashtag. And finally, if you haven't already done so, there is a conference app that you can download. It does give you the best opportunity to make the most of the event today and, and navigate the, the sessions. So uh, the instructions on how to download the app are available in your conference handbook. Every year, Osri is the place where the very best of international and local new technology gathers. And this year is no different. I actually spent some time down in the tech hub this morning, and there are some amazing things to see and there's some great people to talk to. So uh, I do encourage the, you that sometime during the day you do spend a bit of time down there and just check out what's on offer. And finally, events like Osri don't get to happen without the support of our friends and sponsors. So I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge them and thank them for being with us today. So a big thank you to our platinum sponsors, OTB Spatial, EOS 4D Global, and Here Technologies. Our good friends and gold sponsors, Aesthetic and Neomap. And our wonderful silver sponsors, CityWorks, L3 Harris, Eagle View, and Innovantage, and all of our event partners who are set up in the Tech Hall uh, today. So thank you very much.